think, right? And I'm constantly, this is sort of like how I'm going now. And it's just super fast and, you know, large chunks of story. Like, all of this was sort of a scene where someone gets captured, but it was pretty ambiguous in terms of script. And so Joe, um, the director of Kaczynski, um, was just like, he just see something that's really moving and cool. I had sort of this one idea where he's sitting in the dark and he just hears a match strike. And then it comes up to a cigar and lights his face just for a second as the guy inhales the cigar and lights it. And then it's Morgan Freeman. You know? And um, it's this character. So, um, and actually, it, it was such like a graphic image. And you just start, like, you're basically drawing, like, I felt like I was drawing a graphic novel throughout this whole movie because it tends to be lit like this. And it was dark and moody and shadowy. And I kept on thinking of, like, the spirit and you know, old Italian crime comics and things like that, and that was sort of, you know, what I was my inspiration I was going for. So, um, yeah, so this is just how the scene plays out, and, but this is kind of like, like, all you need, but it was, you know, you can get like, probably, I'm just saying this because this is my graphic novel now, this <laughs> is my day job, and, uh, but this was sort of, uh, how it, uh, how I'm doing now, I do about probably 44 to 50 frames a day, like this. But because they're so small and you're thin feet when you're drawing them, they go really fast. And of course, you're cutting and pasting and everything. Um, and just go scan through these. Let's see how it's seen there. And next. This is this, hold on, this. This is the, the first cover I ever did that was literally fully um, digital. Mm -hmm. So I just um, started out with a tiny sketch and then just went in and basically inked this thing. I blew up the sketch, then deleted like most of the value and just went in over it with a, uh, a Photoshop brush. It kind of feels like an ink nib. And uh, it was the first cover I did. And I, I did this cover like door to door from the first little sketch to like just to the next frame to full color, like, sent to my editor in eight hours. Yeah, and then that, that was like, I could get used to it. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god, this is so fast, I can get used to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then I didn't get to sell the original art, which for comic book artists, especially if you're working in mainstream, it's, it's a huge aftermarket of selling your original art. So I have an original art dealer, and he sells my covers and sells my pages, things like that. And a lot of comic book artists make a lot of money after they've done their comic books by some of the original art. So you kind of like, if you go straight to digital, you're giving up that part of your of income. But a lot of artists won't do that because they want the original art sale. I was going to ask that. So, so um, that's a, a, a choice you, you might make rather than right at the beginning of, the, of, of how you're going to work because of a significant aftermarket. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this, this yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I would never have been able to do this eight hours door to door, like, you know, draw it, ink it, color, color scan it, there's no way I would have made it, you know what I mean? Right. It wouldn't have happened. But if, if you want to do this, you can, but it's, you know, you don't get to keep it. You know what I mean? Sure. So. And then the next, this is just my own page. It's kind of like my storytelling at that time. It's like 2000. That's like 15 years ago. Oh my God. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, this is like a, a page I did where it was like, this is the opposite process. This page was like, this is controlled things. But um, this is done by 17, and I was self-publishing through Image Comics, and this was, um, yeah, this was like, first you pencil it, and then you send it out, and give it to an anchor, and then you wait for the anchor to ink it, and then it goes back to my color, and then the color back to color, and then I can do the, at that point, at that time, we were doing film output. So you have to get your film outputted and then put that, send that out to the printer, which is in Quebec. It's a huge process. Graphic novels are way more simpler now because the technology has changed. So you go straight to a printer and write from your computer. It's just so What did you sell then? Your pencil? You sell the original page of uh, artwork. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then this is a Wolverine cover I did earlier this year with this pencil. And I kept it in pencil because I kind of liked this, uh, the value. And I filled in the blacks and everything. And then, uh, and then Marvel thought it was cool. And then they, they did a pencil cover. And then they did a regular um, cover, which was the next one, I think. Yeah. But 
they they were cool with it. They they really liked. They felt it felt. I mean, I had a cool editor, so she was kind of like, it feels pretty enough, and it's Wolverine, so it can be a little nasty and mm-hmm. dirty. And then, uh, yeah. So, uh, and then this was a story I did with Alan Moore back in '97, um, which just getting to the writing process. Um, Alan was like, Alan is every detail in this thing was written on a page by Alan Moore. So <laughs> it's like the castle, the arrow, the axe, everything it was all described in a massive paragraph. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Alan is telling you exactly where to put everything, what to do, you know. But it was, I was so excited for Alan Moore started to share. Yeah, but Alan Moore scripts like an Alan Moore script for like eight pages. The script for eight pages of story for eight pages of comic. That script could be twenty pages long. Just description and placement. Like it was incredibly detailed. He saw the book. You just had to write it. Yeah. Interesting writing process.